Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Shailene and today I'm going to talk about my most surprising and my most disappointing books that I read in 2019. So I have about six books for each category for most surprising and most disappointing. So yeah, let's just jump right on into the video. start off with my most surprising books that I read this year and the first one is The Light Keepers by Abby Jenny. Now this is a book, it's supposed to be like a mystery kind of book. It follows this photographer who goes to the Farallon Islands off the coast of like San Francisco and she is there to photograph the wildlife on the Farallon Islands. There's also this group of biologists that live on the islands as they are all there to study the animals on the islands. She soon discovers that these islands are incredibly dangerous, they're incredibly wild, and there is also some murder going on, as it seems. A bit confusing, I don't want to give away, but two biologists do die, and they're made to look like accidents, but people wonder if they were, you know, if it wasn't actually an accident or not. When I first read this, I thought, you know, this is no way this is going to be a thrilling read. There's a lot of descriptions of the biology of the island, like with animals and lichen and sharks, which I'm a, I'm a nature nerd, so that part I did enjoy, but I wasn't reading this for the nature aspect. I wanted to read this, you know, thrilling mystery. And boy, <laughs> did it ever pick up. This book was most surprising because I am somebody who loves a fast read. I am not somebody who reads a book that is slow and just mundane. I hate those types of books. This one was slow and mundane, but what really, really made this spectacular is the atmosphere of the novel the eeriness that you feel from these islands and it's just it's a gorgeous mix of a book it really is such a masterpiece and oh my god once i got done reading this book i was like yeah okay that was a good book um you know the twist that happened and i you know you find out who you know what was exactly going on which was such a shock and i'm like wow um and I initially rated this, I think, like, a 3.5 stars, which is pretty low, like. But as time went on, and I, you know, I was separated from reading this book for a while, it just kept popping in my head, and I kept thinking about it. I'm like, wow, that really happened. That was an amazing twist, like, you know, those kinds of things. So, in the end, I ended up going back and changing my rating of this to a 5 star. I mean... <laughs> This book was one of my favorite thrillers of the year. It's amazing. If you have not read this, please pick it up, especially if you love any of the things I talked about, especially with like the biology aspect, the isolated island aspect, um, the mother nature and elements. Like, it is so good. I loved this book. Five star, even though it was slower paced, I loved it. It was so good. So the next book I read that was quite surprising to me was The Silent Woman by Terry Lynn Thomas. So this book is set in World War II. We are following a woman um, as she is kind of trapped in this loveless marriage. She doesn't like her marriage. Her husband is basically an a-hole. Uh, and yeah, there's some World War II spy stuff happening, and it's a great mystery with a great female lead character. I absolutely end up loving this, but what was surprising to me was that, A, this was such an unknown book. I never heard of this book before, I've never heard of this author, and I just bought it on a whim because I liked the description, and yeah. I didn't, I don't think I even read reviews on this before I bought it, it just seemed good. And I read this, I loved it, I fell in love with the lead character in this, Kat Carlisle. <sighs> She's just an amazing woman and I absolutely love this. This is one of those books that I love reading. It gives me kind of like those same feels as when I read Anne Green Gables and I'm always on the hunt for books that make me feel that way. So this is actually a series and it's a favorite. 
it is a favorite. So, uh, yeah, I absolutely love this. Um, such a surprising series. It's such a fun read. Like, sometimes I read books way too critically and, you know, with a critical mind instead of just reading a book for fun, which is stupid because we all should be reading books for fun. So the next book that was pretty surprising to me, it was kind of like a wild card. I had mixed feelings on this book, but it's The Crown of Coral and Pearl by Mara Rutherford. So I received this as an ARC from Nekali. I read it, reviewed it, and I rated it kind of low. I rated it a 3.75 stars. What I liked about the book was the beginning and the atmosphere of the novel. And it was set in this here watery kind of, you know, island setting. Uh, I should, guess I should explain what it's about. I have a whole review on it so you can see my thoughts and opinions and kind of why I rated it low. Nor and Zadie are twins and in this here world that they live in, the girls from this here island nation are selected every generation to be uh, be sent to Ilara to become a bride to the king. Basically, women are kind of raised in a toxic environment and yeah. So basically stuff happens. Nor is the one that's sent. She doesn't want to go there, but her sister Zadie is in love with somebody else and she doesn't want to be married off to the king. So yeah, stuff happens. She gets sent off to the castle and the castle part is what takes place in the second half of the book and it's the part of the book which I least liked. The part of that book, it's just like the castle setting. It's very dark. It's very drab. It's wet. It's like boring. It's bleak and it just completely changed the tone and the vibe of the book which I mean great on the author's part for doing that but like I didn't necessarily enjoy it. Only part I liked about the ending was one of the other characters, Prince's or the king slash prince's brother, his half-brother. I liked him um, and some of the stuff that happens in the end. I really liked it. It was a great ending, which sets it up great for the second novel. But like, I just, I had such mixed feelings about this. And I talked about it at length, you know, in that review video that I did. And yeah, um, that's why I ended up reading it low. But then <laughs> it took some time, you know, after I read it, like, you know, it was a while after I read it, I kept, you know, I kept thinking about this book, especially the beginning part of it, which I really loved. And I'm like, man, that second book is going to be amazing. I actually, I can't wait for it. Um, and yeah, I just, this is a book that kind of grew on me. And despite some things in it that I don't necessarily love, I still really love the book. And ended up rating it a five star because... <sighs> It just gave me the feels. Like the first half of the book gave me the feels and if a book automatically gives me the feels, well then yeah, it's a favorite because yeah, I mean despite some things I don't like, it's still a favorite. So yeah, I ended up rating this five stars. <laughs> I changed my rating. <laughs> so the next book that was pretty surprising to me was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Now. Everybody says how great this book is, how amazing it is, and the hype has let me down before, as you will see <laughs> when I talk about some of my most disappointing books. So I was skeptical that I was actually going to like this, but I did. <laughs> it was surprising to me because this book is quite heavily romance-based. So you're following Achilles, it's, you know, the classic tale of Achilles. Um, but we're following the story through the eyes of Achilles' lover, Patroclus, and, well, it's a gay love story. And it ended up being amazing and shocking and surprising, and I just ended up really loving it. Uh, which is surprising because I typically hate romance, whatever, gay, straight, bi, whatever, in any kind of book. So. It was surprising to me that I actually really loved the romance in this and it's probably one of my favorite romances I actually read about. I mean, other than Anne and Gilbert. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I actually ended up really loving this. The writing style is just gorgeous. The way that Madeline Miller writes is just so lyrical and so beautiful. I love her writing. So yeah, I mean, it was just, it was 
beautiful. I loved it and the ending killed me. So yeah, this was so good. I rated it a 4 star. It was great. And the next book that was surprising was Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. So I had the worst luck with thrillers this year. I read a lot of popular thrillers that everybody, you know, talked about, movies were made of, that sort of thing. They were hyped. And I had really, really bad luck with a lot of them. A lot of them I just ended up hating, especially ones where they had like terrible tropes in it that I just, I cannot stand. This book is totally the exception. It was incredible. So following the story of Nick and Amy, they're married. Amy goes missing on their fifth wedding anniversary. Nick looks pretty darn guilty. <laughs> but Amy has secrets of her own. So yeah, it's so twisty and turny and this is just genius. It's so genius. One moment I'm hating one character. The next moment I'm loving that character that I just hated. Like, it makes you... Uh, it's mind-blowing. It's like a mind-blowing thriller, psychological thriller. This is what psychological thrillers should be. Like, this is what you have to live up to. This was obviously my favorite, one of my favorite thrillers, like psychological thrillers that I read this year. It, this story was just so genius. It was so intricate. It was so smart. It was so well plotted. And you just, you can't get any better than that. And yeah, it was a five star hand down. One of my favorite thrillers that I read this year. Yeah, loved it. The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. So this book was surprising to me for a number of reasons. First of all, I wasn't the biggest fan of The Handmaid's Tale of book. Uh, I read it, I thought the writing was very stiff, it was very cold, it was weird. Like I didn't like the writing too much. I mean the story's great obviously, but I just didn't enjoy that book. So I was worried going into this that the writing from The Handmaid's Tale was going to be the same in The Testaments. But it's completely different, <laughs> which was quite surprising and we're also following their perspectives of three different women who have some association to Gilead. <sighs> oh my gosh, the twists, the turns, the surprises, oh my god, this book was brilliant. It was everything that I wanted the testaments to be, it was great. <laughs> I obviously do not want to spoil this book for people who have not read it, but if you haven't read it, you need to because holy crap, there's so many great storylines happening in this and they're just amazing. It's all amazing and I loved it. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It was a five star. I mean, the reason why I was so surprised by this was the writing, obviously. It was so different from The Handmaid's Tale which I think is a good thing because the writing in this seems more modern and like less literary like Margaret Atwood isn't trying so hard <laughs> kind of but yeah I mean the story was just amazing I loved it we are now moving into my most disappointing books that I read in 2019 and there are a few so the first one is going to be a booktube favorite please don't come for me <laughs> The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now, the reason why I was disappointed by this book is nothing but my own fault. So there was so much hype around this book that I was absolutely, like absolutely convinced that when I read this, this was automatically going onto my favorites of all time shelf or favorites of the year shelf. No, <laughs> that is not the case. I just thought this book was okay and when I read like after I read it I had such an overwhelming feeling of disappointment. I actually filmed a whole vlog on this then I lost the footage and I was so relieved that I lost the footage because I just didn't want people to attack me for not liking this book as much as everybody else does. So yeah um I, it's not a terrible rating I mean I think I rated it what I rated it three stars so like I loved the historical fiction aspect. I love Taylor Jenkins Reid. Her writing, like her characters are so well thought out. The plot was great. Um, the whole story as a whole was, you know, pretty 
well thought out and just, you know, it was good. I saw the twist with Monique's character coming a mile away. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it was just okay. It was a good book. Um, it was definitely, although I would say this book is like highly rereadable. Like this is something I would reread in the future. Um, but yeah, other than that, it was just a good book. It didn't make any of my favorites. Because I didn't enjoy this book so much in this here, like in a book format, I think this is going to do so well as a TV show. They're already making one. So yeah, this is going to do great as a TV show. Okay, and my next most disappointing book was The Oyster Thief by Sonia Faruqi. So I had my eyes set on reading this book for a long while. I'm a big lover. Of mermaid books. I just love reading about mermaids, sirens, the ocean, you name it. I love it. So I was excited when this book came on sale. I immediately bought it and I read it like the next month after I bought it or whatever. The premise from this is pretty good. You're following a mermaid, you know, under the sea. She's married to this man who's very high up and uppity to do or whatever in the community. And she doesn't know if she wants to marry him. There's an oil spill that takes place and then her brother becomes sick. She goes off to find this elixir that can cure all. And on the surface you have a human man who is making this here robot that is set on killing all mer people while also mining in the minerals in the ocean. This human man basically has a a bounty on his head and uh, he gets almost killed, he gets thrown in the sea and he gets turned into a merman. He meets the other mermaid who's on this quest for this elixir and then together they go on the quest for the elixir. Now, it's an awesome premise. It sounded like it was going to be, you know, a pretty good book. The author did not do too well with executing this. First of all, there's just so many things going on here. Obviously, I liked the two different perspectives of the characters. I love that in books. There was other things going on. First of all, you have the mer world with all, you know, the mermaid-ness stuff, but the names for things were just cringy. <laughs> they were so cringy. They were so unoriginal. They were just, they were terrible. It felt like I was reading a kid's story, honestly. And then there was an unneeded murder mystery happening in the middle of the book while they're on this quest to find this here uh elixir um and there yeah there's just a bunch of other things going on it was just it was so darn long oh my gosh it was long it was overly wordy yeah no uh by the end of this i was just crushed that i didn't end up liking this like i thought this was going to be such a good mermaid book but nope it was so disappointing so I ended up giving this a 2.5 stars. Okay, and this next book I'm probably the most salty about. Like, I am so mad at this book for what it did. So, The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson. This is the second book in the Truly Devious series. And I read this in July. I was so excited when this came. I read it, like, that month. I was so excited because... Well, I needed to know what was happening with this mystery. I would say the mystery in this book is great. I love the mystery. I hate the romance. This book didn't need a romance. I'm going to sound like a broken record every time I read this book up. This book doesn't need a romance. It didn't need a romance. <sighs> so there's a character in here named David, and he is a hot steaming pile of crap who can just go. Bye. No. I literally, like, I hate David so much, I want to jump in this book and kill him off myself. Because of how the romance played out in this book, I am absolutely terrified for how the third and last book in the series is going to be. I do not want David to be in this series at all. This romance, I am almost convinced, is going to ruin this entire series for me. And this is, this is why. This is why. I don't like reading romance in books because it almost always gets cringy and ruins the book for me. <laughs> this was just so disappointing. Like, after I read it, I rated it sort of highly. Like, I think I rated it like a 3.5 stars um, because the mystery was still really good. I still really liked it. I flew through this book, but like, ugh, 
the romance is gonna kill the series for me. I know it is. Yeah, so uh, I rated this a 2.75 stars in the end because it's just trash. Why was there a romance? Why? Okay, and the next book was Sea Witch by Sarah Henning. So this book is so disappointing because the title is so misleading. Like, the most misleading title of all time. So going into this, you expect there to be so much, like, it's Sea Witch, obviously. Sea Witch, ocean. You expect to be underwater, you know, immersed. No, you're on dry land for 95% of the book. As you can tell, I'm a little salty about it. Pun intended. This is not what I was looking for when I picked it up to read it. Not at all. Not even close. So, you're basically following this girl. Guess what? She's a witch. She lives on land. There's this other girl that comes on land. She's a mermaid. And she looks exactly like this girl, Evie, her dead friend who drowned a few years ago. Yeah. So, that's basically the premise. Things happen blah blah blah. I mean if you liked ball gowns and dancing and the uh, magic then I guess you'll like this book. Uh, there's some you know pretty cliche romance going on. Uh, yeah overall this was just kind of boring. I was waiting for the good bits to happen and then you know at the like last five percent of the book we finally get the part where the sea witch line actually takes place. <laughs> and then yeah it's just it, that's it. That's all. Like it's just like the last maybe three chapters that you get of actual sea witch bit. So I was not impressed. I was disappointed. Uh the next book in the series, which I will be reading because that is the one that I was looking like that is what I wanted from the first book. Has more of the actual sea witch aspect to it. So I will be reading that. <laughs> Hopefully that will satisfy what I wanted to read in the first place. So I rated this 2.5 stars. It was so disappointing. And the next one was a thriller. This is Final Girls by Riley Sager. I was under the impression that this book was going to be much more horror, slasher, movie, kind of, you know, running for your life type of book. Nope, it's not. Basically you have two girls struggling with the aftermath of the massacres that they had faced both separately. One girl is dead in an apparent suicide slash I think it might be a murder. So these two girls, Sam and Quincy, they meet up for the first time. They talk. Yeah, basically we spend most of the book going on this journey with Sam and Quincy while they figure out their new toxic biotile relationship and it just drags on. Like it's the most annoying thing I read about yeah, the only thing that kept my interest throughout this novel was the plot with like um, where Quincy was experiencing the flashbacks when she was, you know, on the day of her massacre basically. That's the only thing that held my interest and the ending was pretty good but still I was just so disappointed. Like I did not want to go through the drama of reading about two girls and their relationship. Like I hate those types of books. So yeah, it was so disappointing, like come on, I was expecting so much more. I wanted something so much better and I just, I just did not get it. So 2.5 stars. And the last book, which is probably my most recent read, um, is The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. I went on this year what I call my cave kick. I watched movies, I watched TV shows, I read books, I watched videos on YouTube. like. I consumed content that involved caves. <laughs> so when I saw this book and I saw that there was this here cave aspect to it in this futuristic setting with this woman, you know, who's a caver, it basically is like, you know, set in the future on a different planet than Earth. This girl, woman, Geyer, she lies her way into this here caving exploration job so she can get money. She finds out things aren't exactly as they seem. The person that's heading the expedition is hiding something from her and yeah it just becomes this here kind of toxic relationship between the caver and the person that's manning the expedition from the surface. So yeah just things happen, they play out and it was just disappointing and this book could have been like 200 pages shorter. 
there were so many descriptions about you know caving itself which like i didn't mind too much but it was just it was overdone it was over wordy this could have easily been a quick like 250 page book and you would have gotten like all the stuff that you would have needed to you know made a good book but because it was overly wordy and long it was just drawn out and i just did not enjoy it also there's like a lot of backstabbing going on between the, like the caver and the expedition leader and then any of the like surprises that did happen weren't really all that surprising when it did happen like they were just lack luster they just didn't hold any weight so yeah this is ultimately was pretty disappointing i was hoping it would be so much better still overall pretty boring i gave it a 2.5 stars those were all of my most surprising and most disappointing reads of 2019 so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do you can go ahead and give it a thumbs up you can subscribe i'll leave my instagram my goodreads my twitter all linked in the description below and i hope to see you guys next time Bye.